All right, hey guys, welcome to Team Forever Strong's weekly team call. Today is July 27th. Um, if you guys have sent me a message recently, like within the past day, and I haven't been able to get right back to you, it's been a little insane over here. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to be playing catch up on all my messages and calls and all that with coaches tonight. So just bear with me a little bit. We've had Nick gone um, working in Miami all week, and then we have had painters here, you know, trying to get the whole house painted, plus the two little kids. It's just, you know how it is. It's crazy. <laughs> so bear with me, guys. But anyways, before we dive into tonight's team call topic, I always like to start out by welcoming in new coaches into the team. So welcome to all the new coaches that have joined our team over this past month. There's a lot of you guys, so I'm not going to go through with everybody's name, but congratulations and welcome to Team Forever Strong. You guys are on an awesome team. You are going to love all the people. You're going to love all the support. You're going to love the community and you're just, you're going to be hooked. You're going to love everything about this. You are in good hands. Um, does anybody have any recognition or any, anything that they'd like to, any successes that they'd like to celebrate with their team this week? Um, we could start with any Emerald coaches. Anybody have any raked advancements? No one. <laughs> like not this week. All right. Maybe next week, but I did want to congratulate a lot of the newer coaches for coming out of their shell and for posting on Facebook or Instagram that they are now brand new coaches for actually getting out there and, you know, inviting and taking that risk and being brave um, and inviting people, and sending links out to new people, try to get people started on their health and fitness journey. So we are proud of you. Keep it up. Stick with it. Um, it takes some time, but you guys will get there. All right, so I don't have any any rank advancements either this week. If nobody has anything else to share, I just want to go over a couple things here on our laundry laundry list here. So, success club this month, guys, which you should all aim to achieve this month, and not this month only, but every month, helping at least three people get started on their health and fitness journey, signing three people up. If you do that by the end of the month, then Beachbody is going to be giving you a free shift shop tank top or t-shirt whatever it is that you like. So that's pretty cool. I'll do anything for the free tank top. I don't know what it is, but tank tops motivate me. <laughs> like you just tell me how and what I need to do and I will do it to get the tank. So I don't know if you guys are anything like me, but if you are, there's a free tank coming to you in a couple of days. All right. Um, the all access challenge pack for $160. This is the last month that it's going to be on sale um, at that price. So definitely want to take advantage of that. Be reaching out to everybody who you've talked to in the past if they were interested um, and they just never got around to it because they couldn't fit into their schedule or they had reasons of why it wasn't the right time. Make sure to go back, like spend all of your time working on this business at this point at the end of the month, going back and communicating and talking behind the scenes with people letting them know this is the last chance. It's only going to be at this awesome discounted price for the last few days of the month. I know last you know month wasn't the right time. Maybe this month is the right time for you. You in or what, you know, be bold about it. Be confident in your messages with people. We know that what we have works and can change their life and can make them healthier, more fit and happier. Okay. The next thing is team cup. So as you guys form your groups together for Team Cup, first of all, every single person on the team, even if you just signed up today to be a brand new coach, should be on a Team Cup. Um, and the reason why is because, number one, especially too, if you're a brand new coach, you might be thinking, oh my God, like I can't handle anything else. I can't do it. I'm in the coach basics. I'm in this message thread, trying to check into the team and juggle my full-time job with my little kids, like what is this team cup thing? It is nothing extra than what you are supposed to be doing anyways to have success as a coach. So I just wanna throw that out there. You're not gonna be doing anything extra. It's a chance for you to actually get this business up and going off the ground fast and to get some momentum going right out of the gate. It's a chance for you to be able to help other people get started on their health and fitness journey and start earning income right away. Because not for nothing, especially as a brand new coach, guys, nothing gets you more fired up and builds that confidence than when you sign up your very first 
person. And if you guys have been doing this for a while and you're listening to me, you know exactly what that feels like when you finally get that first person to commit to being on a health and fitness journey um, and to sign up with you. So this gives you the chance to work with other members now on the team, a group of five, put your heads together, just get out there and invite people. All it is is basically you're working together with your team to try to help as many people get started on their health and fitness journey during that month. You're going to try to get as many success club points together totaled up with your team of five. So it's nothing extra. There's no extra additional trainings or anything like that that you need to go into. Um, it's just you doing the behaviors that are going to build your business. All right. So everyone needs to be in a team. If you are still not on a team, make sure that you post in the team page, you know, get out there, be proactive and just, you know, get your voice out there and say, I need to be on a team. Can somebody help me? There are so many people, so many stragglers left that are not on a team. I know we could kind of put you guys all together to create another team. So as soon as you guys have your team, make sure that you do a nice picture collage of all your groups, you have your team name, and then post it in Team Forever Strong, please, just so that we can really get everybody fired up for this. Um, you know, I wanna have as many teams as possible. I wanna have more teams than we've ever had before, guys, for doing this, and I know you guys are gonna be super pumped at the end of it because your business is going to grow that much faster and be that much further um, ahead, all right? Okay, so any questions on any of that before we dive into the bulk of the call? Anybody have anything they wanna ask? Anything on their mind? No, good to go. <laughs> all right, sorry guys, I am so thirsty. I'm so dehydrated in Florida. <laughs> all right, guys, so. Tonight, we're going to talk about creating strategies so that you can have success in this business. And this is really important for whether you're a brand new coach or whether you are a veteran coach and you've just kind of plateaued or you're just, you feel like you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing to have the success you want to have, but you're just not seeing it. You're not feeling it. Something is just not, something is just not right, okay? So first, I always like to start out by kind of telling you a little bit about what the new, what Kathy as a new coach looked like. <laughs> All right, so when I first signed up as a brand new coach, guys, I was a disaster area, okay? I was a complete disaster area. I was totally overwhelmed. I was completely sleep deprived. Um, I had a four month old and a 22 month old at home, so I was like nursing all hours of the night still, awake for the day at like 5.30 or six, and, you know, trying to think about even getting in a workout was a challenge for me, let alone try to find time now to build a business. So I would put my daughter down, like in the bouncy seats, I'd get my workouts in that way. All right. So I do that. Um, a lot of the times, guys, I would do my work at nighttime when the kids were sleeping. And even though I was super tired and I was so unorganized, guys, and I was like, when they say hot mess, I am probably the best example of a hot mess. And if you know me really well, you know that that is most definitely true. Okay. Basically any chance that I had to work on this business, I did. So I didn't spend any time messing around. Like I never, um, basically if it didn't move my business forward, I was really, really disciplined and self-disciplined with saying, I don't need to do that right now which meant that my house was really messy for a long time because even though I knew I had like, you know, laundry and dishes and things like that to do, I also knew that the business wasn't going to build itself. So there were some things that had to kind of take a back seat. Um, and I would leave a lot of that. <laughs> my husband kind of picked up a lot of the slack with that later on at night. He would do the dishes and things like that. All right. Because let's just face it. If you want to build a business, You've got to do something different from what you've been doing in the past. It doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen, with, which means every single decision that you have throughout the whole day, you're faced with so many different decisions. You had to have to choose. Is this going to move me forward? Is this going to help me? Or is this going to get me to move in the opposite direction? Or is it going to kind of be like a time suck? I did that all the time, which meant even when I was in the car and I was a passenger, if I was at, like just driving around, I would be talking to people behind the scenes, all right? So using your time wisely, that was one of the huge things, my biggest things when I became a, a brand new coach was 
using my time, my free time wisely. Um, <clears throat> I hit Success Club 5 my very first month as a coach. I signed up on June 26th. So there were only five days left. And I just remember my brand new coach, not my brand new coach, my upline coach telling me in my coach basics training that you have to make it happen. <laughs> like you have to make it happen. If you want this to work that bad and you're that serious about it, then you need to make this thing happen. Like you've got to hit success club, not only this month, but every month. And that means getting out there and talking to a lot of people. So my first few people that I signed up were my brother for Shakeology, which he did for a good, I think like seven or eight months. Um, I signed up my, my husband, which obviously he's still in the system and <laughs> I'm running his account. And then I signed up a friend from high school and I got my three people and I achieved that. And when I did that, that boosted my confidence because even though I didn't know what the heck I was doing guys at the time, I knew that, you know what, if I just keep doing this, good things can happen. Like I can do this, even though I'm not familiar with the business, even though I have no entrepreneurial background at all, if I can just do these simple things during my free time, I can make this work. Um, I became a diamond coach in 11 days. All right. Um, and that was all just because guys, I was talking to a lot of people. All right. So that's where I was at the very, very beginning of this business. That's kind of where my mind was. Um, you know, a book that I read right at the beginning after reading um, The Compound Effect and The Slight Edge was I read a book called um, Jab, Jab, Right Hook by Brian, uh, sorry, not Jab, Jab, Right Hook. That's, that's later on in my speech. Sorry, guys. Um, Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy. That was one of the very first books that I read. And basically, in a nutshell, if you haven't read that yet, was it tells you to do the thing that you don't want to do first. And let's just face it. The one thing, if I were to sit here and tell you what's the one thing that will build your business, like if I stripped it all away, I would tell you that it's inviting personal messages and talking to people every day. And guess what? Inviting is like the one thing that who the heck really looks forward to doing that, right? No one really <laughs> likes to do that, but it's the one thing that's going to grow your business. It is the one thing. If you don't do that, your business won't grow. Okay. So I read that book, um, eat that frog. And every time when I would sit down to work, even though I didn't know what the hell I was doing, I knew that I could get behind the scenes and I could message people on Facebook and I could tell them that I had to lose 35 pounds and I was going to be starting this awesome 21 day challenge. I have to do something to get rid of this baby weight. I can't take it anymore. Do you want to do this with me? It's going to be awesome. And I know it's going to work. And that is what I did. And that is how I spent my time. So that book really, really, really helped me focus in on what needed to be done first, because that can be a challenge for a lot of people um, is sitting down and, and being that self-disciplined to actually do what's going to grow your business. Because a lot of times people will sit down and they say, I don't know what's going on. Like I did, I've been working for like an hour, but working to them is scrolling through Facebook, seeing what other coaches are doing, having conversations with other coaches on the team or in the network, all right? Going and creating this big picture collage to make it look awesome for a post on Facebook. That does not build your business at all. Um, I suck at making graphic images, okay? Which is why now, three years later, I have an assistant who does that stuff for me. That's just not my thing. But I definitely didn't, when I first became a coach, spend my time on that kind of stuff. Especially as you guys know, if you are moms, especially too, if you are working full time, time is very limited for you to build this business. And every minute of the time that you have to spend towards this business needs to be spent, you know, being really, really laser focused. All right. So that book really helped me. If you haven't read that book um, or when you finish the PD book that you're reading now, I highly encourage you guys to go ahead and read that one too because it will help you out so, so much. Another thing that I did right from the beginning too, guys, and this is kind of like setting the stage for like how to really have success with this business and creating these systems and strategies is um, I didn't know what a challenge group was when I became a coach. Like you hear people talk about it all the time. I didn't know what it was, but I was inviting people to join my challenge group the first day that I signed up to become a coach, all right? I didn't know what they were. I had no clue how to run them. Um, at all, like literally at all, I was completely clueless. And all of a sudden I had these like group of like eight people who wanted to be in my challenge group. So I was running, like, it was crazy guys. I was running sometimes like three challenge groups a month. And on top of it all, um, 
I was, you know, this is without anybody telling me what to do, guys. This is, I'm getting to a point here. <laughs> I created my team page and came up with Team Forever Strong within the first week of becoming a coach, and I created this team right off the bat. I was running those challenge groups three times. I mean, that's excessive. I don't, I don't recommend that. But my point is, is I was doing it right from the get-go. Um, I was doing that. I was inviting every single day, even though I didn't know what to tell people if they asked me, what is it? I didn't know how to answer the questions. I just knew I had to take action. I was on YouTube every single night. I still do this, guys, to this day, listening to other top coaches in the network, learning so that I could be a sponge, so that I could be better. I just wanted to know what the hell I was doing, and I wanted to be successful so bad. Um, so having all of those responsibilities right from the beginning makes it a hell of a lot harder to walk away and quit this thing. Versus if you kind of just come in and you're like, nee, I'm just going to lay low, kind of see what happens, right? It makes you take ownership right off the bat over your business, right? Because now you have your own team page. You've created your own team name. Now people know it. Kathy Reuter has a team. Even though I didn't really have a team, <laughs> it was for my future team. I was running challenge groups. So I couldn't stop this thing now because now I'm signing up people who are depending on me. They need me. They need my motivation. They need me there every day. So I was doing that. Um, I had put it out there on Facebook, just like all you guys did, that I started on this new business. I'm starting this business now, and people were watching me. Okay, so if you guys have not done anything to kind of take any sense of ownership over your business, I highly encourage you, even if you're a brand new coach, sit down, think of a team name, really. Think of a team name, something that you want to call your future team, and create the group and leave it at that. Because like I said, having that responsibility and that ownership right from the beginning makes it seem so much more legit. Like, yeah, this is my own business. I have my own team. It's called Team Forever Strong. My brother's in it. Okay, don't make fun of me. It's my brother and my mom at this point, but it's going to grow. And everybody starts somewhere, but you have to start with taking that action. So right from the beginning, even though I was a complete disaster area, I was totally overwhelmed. I was totally sleep deprived. Even though I had people in my family and close friends make fun of me and say, you don't look like a health and fitness coach. No one is going to follow you. No one is going to sign up with you. How could you possibly ever inspire anybody? This is a joke. This is a scam. I mean, you've heard it all, guys. You know, because you talk to people every day. I didn't care. I kept going because I believed in this opportunity and I believed in this business and I knew that I could be successful if I just kept going. So that is where I started. Okay, guys. Now, another thing that's going to help you right from the beginning, this is something that I didn't do. So I'm trying to help you out here a little bit so that way you guys don't make the mistakes that I did <laughs> because it's just that much easier. It is I said I was unorganized, and I still am very unorganized, but I've gotten myself more organized than I was when I first started. If you guys don't have a calendar or a planner and a big thing of sticky notes, you need to get that, like tonight on Amazon, <laughs> okay? You need to, sitting down, really and truly sitting down and looking at your calendar for the week and plugging in your business hours of when you're going to work on this, even if it's 30 minutes doesn't even matter, 20 minutes, planning it out so you can follow it. It's kind of like when I used to be a teacher and we had our huge calendar and I had my plan book. I would only teach math at a certain time every day. And when math was over, I didn't like keep teaching math. Like even though I was trying to teach, you know, word work, I wasn't doing math in between. I was doing one thing at a time. And so you need that structure in your life so that you don't get overwhelmed um, and burnt out. So pick yourself up a calendar. You can put on there Put everything on there when the team calls are, you know, go to the calendar, the cover photo in Team Forever Strong and those important dates that are up there for the month, plug them in on your calendar and leave it out on your desk. All right. So do that on your calendar, have a planner, you know, get it all, get yourself organized so that you feel like, all right, like I know what I'm doing here and get some sticky notes so you can write some really important things down on there. I have sticky notes, guys. <laughs> like it's so ridiculous. I have like 10 of them on the perimeter of my monitor right here with like really important things. So that way, if I go to sit down to work, I will be looking at these things like, oh my God, I can't forget that. Okay. Get yourself organized. Just learn from me. I was so unorganized and it was crazy. All right. The next thing that you're going to do that's really going to help you is, um, like I said, nobody really likes inviting, right? Nobody really likes going behind the scenes and inviting people. So a way that can really, really, really help you 
actually start to attract people to you is if you can start, it's called, if you start making jabs on Facebook. Um, and if you've read the book, there's a book called Jab, Jab, Right Hook um, by Brian Tracy. If you read that book, what it basically tells you about is that you are sharing bits and pieces, like little nuggets of information about what you're doing every single day without giving them the whole shebang, the whole story. So if you sit down, you can post to people all the time, post on your wall and start talking about the things that you're doing. You're going to mess up guys. <laughs> like you're going to like some, you're going to do things and it's just not going to work. And you're going to be like, that was stupid. Like that didn't work. And then you're going to do another post and you're going to be like, Whoa, that was awesome. Like I had all this traction on it. You never really know what's going to work. It's all trial and error, but you have to at least be willing to try and take that action. That's how you learn, but you want to get people's attention. All right. On social media. So posting anything like you could post recipes guys. So like, even if, you have not even started your health and fitness program yet. You can still be posting, you know, what your meal plan is going to be. You could be posting what, you know, an awesome recipe that you can't wait to try. You could share your Shakeology recipe, all of these little things to kind of get people to be paying attention to you. Like, what is she doing? Like without using the words beach body coach, um, Shakeology, you know, all those things that people can just Google and get information on. So I started doing these things all the time. And you know, they told me that I should be posting three times a day when I first became a coach. And I couldn't do that, guys, at the beginning. I couldn't do that. Um, I highly encourage you to do it if you can, but I sometimes could only do like one post a day. But I got something up every day and I was consistent with that. So being consistent with that and by being a product of the product, you have to be a product of the product. I'm not saying that you can't fall off the wagon. Trust me, I am queen of that, <laughs> okay? But you have, you have to get awesome results that you can share on social media so that people want to go to you and want to do what you're doing. Without those results, if like you're not sharing your journey and you're kind of like, you know what, yeah, I'm pressing play for shift shop, but I'm also drinking every single night of the week. You're not going to have results. People are going to be like, she said she's doing shift shop, but I don't see any kind of transformation. <laughs> All right, so you need to be a product of the product. And, you know, you also want to show that balance in between. So by sharing all these things, you're proving to people that what you are doing is working. Now, this goes for health and fitness programs and the business too, right? People need your motivation though, guys, and people are watching you. So I never got hung up, and you should never get hung up in the likes and the comments on any of the posts that you make. Trust the process and trust me when I say that people are reading every single post you make and they're watching your every single move. And that's why if I post a picture of whatever Kirsten doing something crazy or my dog, I get like a wicked ton of, of likes. And even at this point, three years in with the success I've had in this business, if I make a post about coaching, there's still not that many likes. It's just the way it is. You can't let it get to you. It has nothing to do with you. People are reading what you're writing though. But I kept doing that and I kept showing up because I knew people were watching me. So you can share things that are going on in your life. You wanna think about when you're posting on social media, you wanna think about what can I share about my day? What can I share about me that's going to be relatable, that might add value to somebody? Maybe that will be something that's funny, right? You, you wanna be real, you wanna be authentic, um, and I messed up a lot, guys, at the beginning. At the beginning, I was posting T25, like, billboard things, the things I tell you guys not to do. <laughs> I was doing that. Like, say a lens tonight. It was, like, the most spammiest, like, salesy thing you could possibly ever do. You learn through the mistakes. I look back at that now, and I'm like, oh, my God. I can't believe I actually posted that. <laughs> but I'm like, why? Well, I, I, no wonder why I got two likes on it, <laughs> you know? It's ridiculous. Um, so all these little things that you're sharing, like if you're in the shift shop, you're sharing all these little nuggets every single day. You're sharing a piece of information about maybe the support and accountability group one day. The next day you're talking about the relentless book that we're reading in the, in that group. Cause we're doing personal development in that group. Hopefully you guys are reading it 10 minutes a day. So you can talk a little bit about that. You can talk about how the recipes that you're doing, the meal plan, the workouts, anything about it. You're doing these little jabs, these little nuggets every day for about two weeks, okay? That's what you gotta do. You gotta do it over and over and over again. Um, you're setting the stage now, guys, to build your business, to now go and invite people publicly on your wall to join your challenge group. 
Okay. So that's why you've got to have both those pieces there. Sometimes I see coaches, they don't really share anything on their wall at all. Um, and this can, this will go both for challenge groups and to find people for the business. I'll start at the challenge groups first. I'll see people who won't post anything about the workout programs that they're doing. You won't, you don't really know that they're in a workout program and that they're working on themselves, but then bam, there's this big post about our challenge groups kicks off on Monday and I want five people to do da, 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 this big thing and no one likes it. That doesn't work effectively because you haven't been showing these people any information about how awesome it is and how it's going to help them leading up to that point. So you need to have those pieces there where you're sharing your information. And this is the same thing with coaching too. I see people um, who they never like, you would look at their wall, you'd be like, wow, they're in awesome shape. Like they, they love to work out. Like they're totally crushing it. They're building a business though. Like you don't know that they're building a business with this coaching thing because they never talk about it and they never talk about how it's impacting their life and why they love it so much and, or anything like that. And then all of a sudden there's a coach sneak peek for team forever strong coming up and they'll be like, but there's a coach sneak peek, learn more about what I do. And people are like, what is she talking about? I didn't even know that she was a coach. Right, so it kind of works both ways where you want to be sharing little bits of information. Yeah, exactly, like Kim posted in here. Share your nutrition, share your energy, strength from the, from the exercise, sharing personal development. Sharing nuggets that you learn from personal development is huge because let's just face it, guys, not that people want to read and want to become better. They're not into that self-help stuff. But if you are putting it out there that you are doing personal development every day, and what you're learning and that you're becoming a better version of yourself, you're going to attract those people who are going to be willing to work on themselves into your business. And that's huge because personal self growth and that personal development in this business is what takes you all the way. If you're going to go all the way, which we're going all the way guys, because there's no quitters. I'm not letting anybody quit this team anymore. I will hunt you down. <laughs> all right. So, You've got to do this now, these little jabs every single day for at least two weeks before you get any traction. So like if you're a newer coach, you know, you might be like, man, I just posted for like two days about, you know, my workout that I did and how awesome I feel and I'm being real and no one's liking it and no one's commenting on it. That's normal. No one will comment or like it or you won't get any kind of engagement for at least two weeks of you being consistent um, every single day. And you just have to know that it's nothing you're doing wrong. It's just you have to practice patience and just be willing to go to go the distance with it. All right, so the jab, jab, right hook. The right hook now is when you finally present that you have your challenge group kicking off. So I know there's a lot of people on the team who they're waiting for their product to, uh, to come in, they're waiting for Shakeology to come in before they actually start Shift Shop, let's just say on Monday, right? If you had been a little bit every day for this whole week talking about the excitement leading up to that, maybe your meal prepping, you're going grocery shopping, there's a picture of your food, post a picture of one of your favorite recipes that you think you're gonna really love. You know, you're kind of setting the stage for it. Now, the right hook is when you come in and you invite people to join you. On this challenge group, we have this awesome 21 day support and accountability group starting on Monday. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be so much fun. The results are fast. The nutrition plan is so simple and it's really good food. You know, I want five people to do this with me, that kind of thing. Now it kind of all falls in place because you've been talking about it. So just getting used to putting yourself out there on social media um, is huge. You kind of, you really do have to look at Facebook differently now, especially if you're a newer coach, you have to look at it differently. It's not like, it's not the way that it used to be for you. Now you're using this as your business. Basically your wall of things that you're posting is like your storefront. If you were to own you know, a legit store, right? The things that you're putting out there every day is what is going to draw people to you and build your business over time, okay? So you can't just post this thing once and expect it to work miracles and expect it to happen overnight. You can share transformations. We have in our team page, I don't know if you guys know, but in our team page, we do have a whole section there under photos, under albums of um, transformation photos. Go in there, okay? Look at the transformation photos, you know, obviously get the okay from the person whose picture does and share it up there and talk about it because now people are seeing not only is this working on Kathy, but this is working on, you know, Aaron and Courtney and whatever and all these other people. It actually is real. It's not just her. It's other people. You know what? This is probably going to work for me too. It's my time. I'm going to give this a shot. 
So doing things like that, any kind of tips that you have, all right? So that is a huge piece of advice that I have. So even though you do hear post three times a day, and if you can, you should, the most important thing that you can do is to show up every day on social media. Like I said, even if it's just once, choose to never miss a day, all right? Keep things really, really simple, guys, and just stay focused on the vital behaviors. And you're going to hear um, a lot about this, um, the vital behaviors, especially if you're a newer coach, about how the vital behaviors is, the, is what grows your business. It's the whole foundation to success in your business because there will be a lot of shiny objects. So I remember when I first became a coach, um, I actually, guys, never followed any of the coaches in the network. I know it sounds insane because it's like the first thing you want to do, right? When you become a coach is let me go follow those most successful ones. Like I would watch training videos from them. Yes. On YouTube. Um, and I would take notes and things like that and just become better just by hearing it over and over again. Um, but I never like would go to like stalk people's walls is what I'm trying to say. And I really do think that is one of the reasons why I moved quickly in this because I didn't have anybody in my head, so I wasn't ever second-guessing myself or second-guessing anything that I wanted to share because I wasn't looking at anybody else. I was just, okay, Keith Callahan, that's my upline coach, one of them, you know, Keith Callahan said in my coach basics, like, I need to share on social media, I need to be in my coach basics, I need to be in the team page, I need to be inviting people every day, following up, doing personal development, so when I sat down at night, I was exhausted, guys, because it was like 8.30 at night. I didn't have time to be like, let me go see what Lindsay Matway is doing tonight. All right, I was like, boom, I need to invite like now. And that's all I would do. So if you're getting hung up on other people, and you'll hear even a lot of the veteran coaches on the team, like they've already been through it, they know, they'll tell you, like just unfollow them. It's really funny because for the longest time in this business, and even to this day, Nick will be like, some coach's name will come up, some other coach that's like, you know, top of the network. And I'll be like, who is that? And he'll be like, you don't know who that is. I'm like, no, because I don't stalk other people. I just, I do my thing. It's going to build the business. And then that's the end of it. I don't have, there's no free time for that kind of stuff. So don't get hung up in watching other people because then every time you do go to share, you're not going to be authentic, which means you're not really going to be you. And then you're going to attract all these people to you who aren't really your, your tribe. They're not going to be your tribe. And then what happens is that those people never last. They never stick around. They're there for like three to five months and then they quit. All right. So that's the best advice that I can give you is to keep things simple and to do the vital behaviors because you guys don't need another training. Uh, honestly, when I was a coach, I'm trying to think when the hell was my first training I was even in? I swear to God, I was never in a training guys. You know how they have all these trainings, right? Like diamond dash, like get to diamond and you're going to earn this cash pot. I was never in any kind of training. So don't think that you need another training or like another mentor to help you get to where you want to go. You just got to be self-disciplined. All right. Um, a really simple way. Cause like I said, I was a total disaster area when I became a coach and you know, guys, some of you who have been doing this for a while, maybe you need to kind of take it down a notch and just get back to these simple things. I would literally have a sticky note out in front of me, <laughs> like, you know, teacher style, right? All these different colored sticky notes. And I would just write on there like the five things that I knew I needed to do every day. And I would keep it there and I would put a check mark on them. You'll see all these fancy checklists and things like that with all this stuff. But I never got wrapped up in that until much later on in the business once I kind of got a handle on things and I started to grow the team pretty big. But at the beginning, all I wrote was I drank my shake. Okay, I, I read my PD, well, I listened to my PD because I really don't like to read books. I listened to my PD. I did my workout, I checked in with my groups, I added value on social media today, and I added three to five new friends to my network. It was literally those things, that's it. Yeah, like six things. On a little tiny little thing like this, <laughs> and I would keep it at my desk, and I would not, well, at my counter at the time, and I would not go to bed until I got those things done. Even if it was super late, I would not, not miss a day. So. Maybe you just need to tone it down a little bit, like really make things basic and simple for yourself. Okay. All right. So attracting success. So this is another way and another strategy that you can build an awesome business, right? Is by attracting successful people to you. So you'll hear people all the time be like, like, Oh God, like I just really wish I just really want to have like this 
like this awesome rock star coach. Like I know they're out there. They are out there. Every single one of you on this team right now, like your, like your top coaches in your team are still watching you on the sidelines. They're just waiting for that right moment when it's right for them. And they're waiting to see that right thing that you're going to post that's going to get them to pull the trigger. And my point is, is that, um, because people would always say like, I don't understand, like, how did you become a diamond in 11 days? And how did you be grow the team to a 10 star diamond team and all that? in like a year or whatever it was like 13 months, how did you like attract so much success? And the key to it guys was that you have to exude and like be like pouring and gushing out confidence from your pores, <laughs> even if you really don't feel like you're that confident. So even when you're a brand new coach, like you have to act like that person who you want to attract. So like if you want to attract someone who's like a top coach material onto your team, like you have to be that top coach person and be doing those behaviors and, and have that confidence. And people can tell when you talk to people, they can tell behind the scenes if you have that confidence and that excitement for this. And then they get that trust in you. So you kind of, especially at the beginning guys, I mean, I told people from the second week, it might have even been before that guys, I was a little insane. Um, I mean, I told people when I was talking to them, listen, my upline coach, Liz, she's only 28 years old. Like she's retired from her corporate job. She's just about to retire her spouse from, you know, from his corporate job. And they're going to be home, like both of them just doing what they want every day. And they're going to have their babies and it's going to be awesome. And, you know, they're totally debt free and financially free and they can live their life. And that is exactly the way I am going. So even though I wasn't there yet, not even close, you have to talk that way to people. You really do kind of almost like have to pretend like you're that successful coach right now because you, you just have to be willing to do that, guys. You have to be okay with failing in this business because I think what happens is a lot of times with coaches is they get so wrapped up in being, you know, perfectionist and doing everything right. And they have this huge fear of failing that then they're afraid to even try. And if you're that person, it's going to be a real struggle. It's probably going to be very unlikely that you're going to actually build a successful business because you have to be willing to fail. You have to be willing to mess up. You have to be willing to fall flat on your face. You have to be okay with that. It's going to happen. I have failed so much, so miserably. And I got something in the works that's going to all tie into this at another point in time. So you'll be able to hear more in detail about it. <laughs> So much guys, but you have to be okay with that because each time that you fail and things don't work out the way that you thought that they were going to, or you're not where you thought you were going to be, or somebody cancels or quits or whatever, or you try something and it's a total flop, you have to know that it is a chance for you to learn and grow more. And you can take all those learning moments and teach them now to your team. So your team can become, become better um, and more confident in themselves and what they do. Okay. So the dog is barking. It drives me nuts. I, I need, what I need is airplugs guys. That's the next thing I need to do. Um, so you have to get to the point in your business where you can say, do I want to, am I, is that desire to have success trump the idea that I could fail? Like it's going to be more than that. Like you have to want to succeed so much more than like, Oh my gosh, like, but what if I, I don't know if this is going to work out. That has to, that has to trump it. Okay. And that determination that you have, um, you have to prove that this business is going to work. All right. Having that determination, like even though I have failed so many times guys miserably and have done things that haven't worked and I've had so many cancellations and so many rock stars quit and all that stuff, I still had that determination. Like I'm not going anywhere and I'm going to be here all the way. And I want to prove to people, to my top coaches who are out there watching me right now, who haven't signed up yet that, geez, like Kathy's serious about this. She's really not stopping. Jesus, you have to be that person for the people who are out there watching you, especially. You have to prove to them that this business is going to work. Just like how when you're in your challenge groups, guys, and you're gung-ho about like, this is awesome. And look at this. And look at the, you know, the shape I got into. And look how much weight I lost. You have to have that energy and excitement about the business so that you can attract business builders onto your team. And then you can have huge teams and you can be running these big calls like this too for your team. All right. Um, believing in the opportunity. So this is something too, like just you have to believe in the opportunity. So 
I knew that <clears throat> obviously how much time you spend on this, as long as you're doing the right behaviors, is going to be like a key factor in how fast you're going to grow. And, you know, obviously I grew fast, but it was because my back was up against the wall and I was totally desperate. So there was no other way for me, like, which meant I made sacrifices. And if you're going to build a business, like a real business, not just like a hobby, like if you really want to build a business where you can have like residual income <clears throat> so that your family is all set for life, you have to be willing to make temporary sacrifices. So for me at the beginning, I gave up a lot of sleep. I mean, I still don't sleep that much, guys. <laughs> it's been crazy though with the move, but I gave up a lot of sleep. I stopped watching all these shows that I used to watch at night, you know, like Bachelorette and like Walking Dead and reruns of Homeland. And I can't even remember half the shows because I honestly, I don't watch TV. Every time now that I go to sit down and try to give myself a break to watch TV, I'm like, this sucks. This isn't even any fun. I would so much rather be working in the business. So I have a hard time actually watching TV at this point. Um, but you got to be okay with giving up things like that in order to be able to go on and create these incredible businesses that are going to change your life. Now, if you're just, if you're just in this and you know, you don't need any kind of money, right? Like you're totally financially secure. You love your job. Then don't kill yourself, right? Just be realistic. Maybe you're going to work 30 minutes today, an hour tomorrow, 30 minutes the next day. <clears throat> you're not going to be so balls to the wall. Like people like, like I was right where I kind of had no choice where it was either you either make this work and start earning a couple hundred dollars now, or you leave the kids and go back to teaching. All right, so it's different for everybody, um, but never compare your goals to somebody else's goals on the team. All right, that was another thing that kept me kind of focused was, you know, I didn't really care what everybody else was doing and where they were in the business. I looked at it and I did say like, that is so awesome that you can actually have that much success with this. Like, damn, like, if she can do it, like she's no better than me, I'm gonna do that too. That is exactly where I'm going. And I just kept my head down and worked in front of the computer screen and that was it and stayed focused. So do the same thing. You know, don't look at other people and get wrapped up and think you need to be like looking like they do or living the life they need to. Just be you and go at your own pace. This is a business, guys. It's very, very, it doesn't, it's not gonna go fast, okay? It was very, it's rare to move fast like I moved fast, but I also put in a lot of hours. I was putting in five hours a day, guys, all right? Most people are not willing to do that, okay? Most people are doing an hour. So you will get to where I am. It will just take you a little bit longer. So slow and steady, guys, wins the race, and it's gonna help you from being becoming burnt out too, and it'll keep the joy in it, and it'll be fun for you, and you, something that you look forward to, and it won't be like a chore, okay? Um, Having that fearless attitude, that's key. Like, do you have that fearless attitude, like when you're out there? Um, and honestly, guys, like attracting those successful coaches to you, a lot of people think that, well, you know, I'm never going to be able to attract um, a good coach on the team because I haven't even made an income yet. I have nothing to show for it. I don't even know what I'm doing. And that's a huge, huge myth. As a matter of fact, people are not, first of all, number one, you don't want people attracted to you for the money. Because if they're coming to you just for the money, they're going to be quick fix, instant gratification. And one month later, they're going to be like, this is too much work. I don't feel like doing it. And it's like, well, duh, this is building a business. <laughs> it's going to be work. <laughs> so honestly, what it really is that attracts those people to you is like I mentioned earlier, is having that confidence. Do you look excited in your posts? I'm not kidding you. People are drawn to excitement, energy, confidence, enthusiasm. That is what they are drawn for. So you're drawn to, you could be a brand new coach. And if you're out there and you have this awesome smile on your face and you know, and you just look excited about life, even if it's day one and you post a picture like that and get creative with it, people are going to be drawn to you. They're like, wait, tell, they'll want to ask you questions about what you're doing because you always look so happy and confident. Honestly, that is the key to getting those awesome coaches. Okay. Um, those will attract confident people into your business. The last couple pieces here that I'm going to go over are challenge groups and then attracting active coaches to you. So challenge groups, like I said, right from the beginning, guys, I mean, I highly encourage you. You guys are always welcome, obviously, to be in my challenge groups. And especially if you're in the shift shop one now, that's totally fine too, because I was in a test group. So I want to really run that thing on a certain way. But, you know, once you're comfortable you really should be out doing your own challenge groups, okay? So getting out there and getting those challenge groups and running them every single month. Like I said, sometimes I was running, guys, I mean, it was insane. Sometimes I was running like five of them a month. I would actually 
dedicate them. Like I don't think Carrie Diamico is on right now, but she's one of the coaches who have been with me like almost this entire time since I was a coach. Just her and Enos, I don't know, a couple other people. And I would give them a challenge group because I'm like, I can't run five groups at one time. Can you do the one that's going to start on this date? And then can you do the one that's going to start on this date? And I was running these challenge groups. So don't be afraid to get out there and run your own challenge group. Get really, really engaged in your challenge groups. Don't just throw them in and think that it's going to do the work for you. You are their personal coach. So that's one thing that really helped me was I always stayed in really close contact with the people who I was signing up always checking in with them every couple of days. You know, how do you like your shake? Is it, what recipe do you use? Do you love it? Like, it, cause if you don't love it, we need to find a recipe that you do love. Um, because we know that if people don't really love what they're doing, they're going to quit. They're going to fall off and they're not going to want to do it. Right. So staying in that close contact and getting those people, those results, those people go on to make the best active coaches on the team. Like I can literally look at the screen right now and there's so many of you on here who have gone through the challenge groups and have gotten like awesome results first. And now like you're like building your teams and stuff like that. Or you've decided, you know, what, I can do this coaching thing because it's having that belief in the programs and the products that is key. You can't really build a business if you don't love what you do. Like if you don't really love it or believe in it. So that's why really helping your coach, your people get awesome results making sure that are you okay with the meal plan? Like what can I help you tweak the shakeology? All that stuff is huge, huge, huge. Um, and then <clears throat> the same thing now, like I mentioned with social media, you want to be talking about like your health and fitness, journey, like all different little nuggets about the challenge groups leading up to the start date of our next challenge group. Okay. So that way when you go to make that post out there, people will be like, Oh my God. Yeah. I've been seeing her post about this thing that she's doing. I got to get in this time. It looks awesome. You know, who cares? You can even share posts from the challenge group on your wall. I ask people, listen, like that was an awesome post you made. It was really vulnerable. Can I share that on my wall? It will inspire people. I know it will stuff like that. Right. And it's the same thing with attracting active coaches. When you know that we run like a coach blitz or like a coach sneak peek uh, two times a month, it, it'll be on the calendar when the next one will be. Um, for August. So you'll see the dates. That is when you should take out your calendar and, and look at it and write down when it's going to start. Now leading up to that, okay, is where every day now you're going to want to sprinkle little bits of information about like coaching and why you love coaching. So for example, taking a picture of this team call, people do it all the time. They take a picture right in the middle of the call. They post on social media, like, damn, I love this group. I love my team. They're so amazing. They're so inspiring. They keep me going every day. It was such a crapshoot of a day with the kids. And this is why I love owning my own business and doing this because at night I get to talk with real adults and that like hits home with people who are stay at home moms because I literally was just saying that to my mom the other day. These kids are driving me friggin' nuts. If I did not have this business and I wasn't talking to you guys at night and doing calls, I, I seriously would lose my mind if all I did was stay at home with them and then at night talk about how crappy the day was and how stressful it was and then go to bed and then repeat. So <laughs> that's like appealing to stay at home moms. You know, it's something that you can do for you. You get to interact with other grownups. It's fun, you know, and it's just cool, right? So little bits of information like that that you can share. Posting about something that you learned from personal development. Talk about um, a gift that you got from a coach, you know, like post, take a picture. I would do that all the time, whether it was a gift that was sent to me from Beachbody for hitting Success Club. I mean, I would take, I got so much things, <laughs> like so many things, so many posts were going up. People are like, wow, like you must be doing really good with this business because you're getting a lot of clothes, <laughs> you know, just little things like that, a little gift, a card, somebody sends you, um, whatever, like a phone call that you did. Like I see people post, they do like group workouts together, just anything to show about the business and what it's doing for you. Maybe you earned a paycheck that was like literally 50 bucks and you were like, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm able to take my mom out for a really nice, you know, going out for birthday lunch. You know, I really didn't have the cash before, but I helped some people get started on their journey. And now I can use that income to give back to my mom. Little things like that. Like you don't have to have this massive success and have you rolling in the dough to, to attract like awesome coaches on your team. Like that's just not the truth. Okay. But you do need to be talking about the business. And 
I'm really huge on this because, you know, I really want you guys to build your teams and I really want you to be able to attract business building coaches to your team. But at the same point in time, you have to be sharing about the business. Some posts, I mean, you figure if you're making like three posts a day, right? You should be able to make one small post, something at least five times a week, at least, right? Just something, a little bit of information, right? Summit, we were at Summit. Maybe you got a trip coming up. Maybe you got an email from Carl Deichler congratulating you and you get to do the one, you get to do a call with him for hitting success starters as a newer coach. Anything, anything to talk about the business. Um, how to make it work as a full time mom, because that's the thing is a lot of people will be full time working moms and they're going to think, I don't have time for this. So, sharing little bits of information about how, you know, when I first signed up for this, I really didn't think I was, I was going to be able to build a business because I had no time left in my day. But what I found was that all I needed was like a little bit of solid time dispersed throughout the day and I could make it work. And now I'm staying at home with my kids and doing what I love and I'm building a business and I have an awesome team and it's the best of both worlds. Showing people that they can do it too, right? Just putting it out there like that. Letting people know that you're busy too <laughs> and that you're still making it work. Okay. Remember you guys, you build it slow and steady, just slow and steady and keeping it simple, really simple with that little sticky note, right? With your monthly goals, like every month you should write down, you know, how many people you want to help and everybody, no matter who you are. I don't care if you're here just for hobby or whatever, every single person, your goal should be to help three people every month. And so you hit success club. It should be because even if you're doing this for hobby, just those three people that'll at least cover the cost of your product. So you'll be getting your product for free. So you don't need to go all gung ho and be like hitting all crazy numbers, but everybody should have that written down. What your goals are, like where you want to be at the end of the month, how many people you want to help, right? And then every day you have that little checklist of what you're going to do. And it's literally those, those simple little things, guys, over time that get you to create a an incredible business as long as you're doing the right activities and being self-disciplined um, to do it all right because you do you will hit roadblocks um, one thing that this is kind of I didn't mention at the beginning but one thing that I really think um, well I know it was I not think but <laughs> one reason why um, quitting just was not was not an option for me was because I was doing this for my kids straight up like there was I didn't care how much income I earned um, I've never been wrapped up in the income I, I never even checked my account to be honest I really don't even know how much my paychecks are because I never did it about the money when I came into it I needed to stay at home with the kids and I needed to just earn a couple hundred dollars every week that's just that that was it and so having that really strong strong foundation and reason of why I was in this was huge it was like Okay, like how bad do you want to be at home with your kids? Like how important is this for you? Because the clock is ticking and they're going to get older and they're going to be in school full time. And my story is not your story. A lot of people don't want to be at home with their kids and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, that's what I wanted. So I had a really strong, strong reason. So every time when I really felt like, God, I'm just so, I don't know if I can do this right now. I'm just so tired. I'd be like looking at a picture of them that I had on my screensaver and I would say, you either make this work or you leave them and you drop them off at daycare. What's it going to be? Because no one's going to do this for you. You are the CEO of this business. What's it going to take? What's it going to be? And I mean, I would I mean, obviously I will fight tooth and nail for those kids because that was so important to me. And that is why I never went anywhere and never even questioned quitting or leaving. So ask yourself that reason that that needs to be the foundation guys for you to really, to really, for everything else to fall into place. That reason has to be really, really strong. And even though guys, trust me, the days are so hard. Like, you know, if you have kids and you know, if you're home with them 24 <laughs> seven, sometimes you, it's like, my mom was like, I can't believe that you're not an alcoholic because she's been here staying with us. <laughs> like, it's just so crazy. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I mean, that's what matters most to me. And I know I'll look back and I will miss these, these days when they're so little and innocent and the time will go by. Um, and at least I can look back and say, I did everything in my power I could to make it work to be home with them. So what is your reason? It's not going to be my reason. I mean, if it is, that's fine. Don't feel like it has to be my reason. Find that reason and keep it in front of you every single night or whenever you sit down to work and just don't let anybody stop you. And patience 
and slow and steady and consistency wins the race every time, guys. All right? So anybody have any questions before I let you guys go for the night? Thanks for being on. Let's take a, I'm going to take a picture, guys. So hold on. <laughs> Hopefully my lens, that's another thing. Clean your lens, guys, if you take pictures. For the longest time, I always posted blurry pictures, and Nick would be like, you're driving me nuts. Your pictures are so blurry. Like, don't you see that? I'm like, no. <laughs> All right, guys. Ready? Everybody wave or something. One, two, three. <laughs> Best team ever. All right, guys, you guys are all amazing. You guys can all do this too, okay? No one is any better than you or any different than you. You all have the same potential. We're here for you guys. I really want this freaking team to blow this shit out of the water for the rest of this year, okay? I want them all going back to Summit with teams of our own. Register for Summit. Get yourself on a team cup. Get your team pumped up, and let's do this, guys, and finish the last few days of this month strong and all make a commitment to help at least two more people get started on their journey, all right? Have an awesome night, guys. Love ya.